Yes, I bought a cheap CNC spindle from AliExpress and then I designed and built a CNC machine around it. And then I began to regret my decision. Let's have a look at the amount of wobble. You can quite easily get plus or minus 0.1 of a millimetre. And if I go up onto the bearing housing itself, apply the same sort of force. Plus or minus 02, 03 maybe. Right, so I dismantled the spindle to have a look at it and it's not good. Um, it's had the front cover. I've got one little um, spindly bearing that has got a preload washer behind it that rests against this rubber boot uh, inside a, an unmachined casting that's about as thin as a rich tea biscuit. It weighs about 14 grams, the whole thing. It's um, not very substantial. Um, obviously the, the bearing is um, entirely rubber mounted. And that rests against, take the back cover off again. Uh, a circlip with a couple of fibre washers and that's the um, arrangement you've got a rubber boot and then the housing uh, and this rattles around in that front cover like the proverbial uh, and at the back end of the motor you see the um, brushes have been chamfered um, to make it easier to assemble. So they've only really been running on that edge there. Uh, and you can see even on the, the short length of time we've had it running already, it's, uh, it's burnt up the, or started to burn up the commutator a little bit. So that will need sorting as well. Uh, but there's a lot of fresh air at the front of the spindle here. So what I've done is I had a couple of Chinese um, angular contact bearings, a pair of them, uh, intended for lead screw fixed support. So what I'm intending to do is to have one of those either side of that circlip I can't find any other way of um, actually constraining the, the thing. Uh, that's just a former that the uh, armature's wound on. I wouldn't, wouldn't want to put anything up against there. Uh, and I can't co come up with any clever ideas other than leaving the circlip in place and putting these two on. So I've machined up a housing for that. Uh, so the two bearings will go in. Um, either side of the circlip be clamped shut and then that will bolt into the um, original motor housing. Uh, I've also reworked the brushes to some extent to try and um, uh, make sure you have a, a better contact with the commutator. The rear bearing is also rubber mounted in the same, same way as the front one. I'm not intending to do anything with that at the minute but uh, maybe one day I'll make a new back plate, but I mean, it is what it is. So we want the motor together. Just unhook the brushes. Hands. So the brushes there are on the commutator, so I'm going to put that in now. And 
try not to, to pull it out. So this is the new front housing. Um, the bearing, one bearing in it. Slips nicely into there. Get that circlip groove. So tricky bit now is getting that circlip into position. Check that's down in its groove, I'm pretty sure it is. And then we can put the second bearing in on top of that. We'll put numpty here, hadn't jammed it on the shafts, there we go. And that fits nicely into the housing. And then I've got the uh, clamp ring that fits on the top of it. There's a couple of grub screws there which will tighten onto that top of that flange to lock it when it's in position. The back's right off now. And there's a couple of um, holes to suit the, the pin spanner from the angle grinder to help um, tighten it up or undo it, whichever. Screws nicely onto that. So I think at the moment it'll still be, yeah, still end float. So if I do this up now until the end float is just eliminated. Absolutely no end float on that. Spins nice and freely. Um, probably what I'll do is um, is run it up and let it bed in, then gradually tighten that as it as it beds in. And it's just putting the um, original screws back through to hold it all together. I'll we'll put some recesses in the back of the new front cover so that there's a, some of these screws to locate. So you're not trying to get them started in the threaded hole blind Oops. and you, you can't do these up too tight because like the front cover this, this back cover is uh, got the structural integrity of a uh, rich tea biscuit okay it's back together right, this thing is powered up and uh, assuming it runs okay and I've got to um, press the year 11 collet chuck back on. And this was an absolute pig to get off. It was very, very tight. I um, had to move a, a jacking screw inside the collet nut. So I screwed that in and then and jacked against the ball bearing on the end of that shaft. Um, so, but it was very tight. I'm hoping I can press it back on again without knackering the motor shaft. We will see him just to prove I haven't killed it dead. Still runs. Right, so after recutting the uh, taper and the uh, collar, really open collar, that's about as good as I can get. It's about 0.03 total indicator reading. Um, I'm going to stop messing around with it now. I'll put that on there. Was five kilos, so we're looking at there oh five oh six ish. If I go up to my maximum twelve, there's twelve or so kilos, thirteen, that's twelve kilos. There we're up to point one five, and if I go up onto the 
bearing housing itself. That's five kilos. That's 12, 13. Right, so this is the reworked spindle, the same setup as before. So this is on the spindle housing, so we've got the same amount of movement there. Okay. If I put the gauge down onto the bonnet holder itself. So there's still some movement when wiggling it, but not as bad as before. If I load that up to five kilos, it's about 0 0.015, maybe 0 0.2. I just say 0 0.02. And if we take it up to the twelve kilos, is that twelve kilos there? We've got point oh five. So there's some improvement. Um perhaps not as much as I would have hoped. But um there we go. We'll see how the cutting react. Right, so am I happy with this mod? Um, not really, and I'll show you why. What I've got here is a, a mock-up of the spindle. So the spindle shaft down the middle, I've got the, the two bearings. Uh, you have to imagine a collet chuck here, and then the, the tool in the collet. And I've been measuring the stiffness right up here by the spindle nose. That's, and that's a DTI, in case you hadn't known. Uh, and what's happening is that when I apply force to the spindle you can see that the whole shaft is flexing between the bearings and if you work the, the maths out for a, an overhung beam the stiffness you get for a 10mm diameter steel shaft, 130mm support spacing measuring the displacement of the, this sort of area, uh, is of the order of about six newtons per micron. And that's in line with the five newtons per micron or so that, that um, I've actually measured. Um, and the, the absolute numbers I'm measuring aren't, aren't too bad on the face of it, but bear in mind I'm measuring them right up here by the spindle nose. So what is, I don't know, four or five newtons a micron up here is going to be ten times less than that when you get down to the, the end of the tool tip. And the stiffness of a six millimeter carbide tool is of the order of, of uh, two newtons per micron um, with say thirty millimeters stick out. But if you, you choke up on that just a little bit more you can you can double it. So if the tool is is going to be the uh, the limiting factor, then then everything supporting that needs to have a stiffness, you know, greater than two newtons per micron or thereabouts. Um, 
And this business of choking up on the tool is important as well. Uh, and the design of this spindle, where the collet chuck is mounted on the end of the shaft, limits the depth that you can fit the tool into the, into the collet. And as I've drawn it, it doesn't look too bad, but in reality, the um, maximum insertion depth was about that much, which left quite a lot to stick out. So this configuration is fundamentally limited. To Im improve the stiffness of this, it needs a bigger diameter shaft, it needs the bearings closer together, and it needs the shaft and the, the collet in one piece such that you, you can um, get the tool right up and choke up on it to, to minimise the tool deflection and also minimise the overhang um, from, the, from the spindle bearings. So those are the reasons that I'm not happy with this design of spindle. I don't think it's letting me get the full potential out of the machine I've got and I've decided to make a, a, a different spindle, a new one. If you're thinking about building a machine, I would recommend that you don't start with one of these uh, AliExpress spindles, uh, unless you only want to do something like PCB milling or some um, very light engraving. A better option would be one of the water-cooled spindles that are around now. Uh, they cost more money and they're bigger, which is why I haven't got one.